I, I guess kind of transitioning and you know to this idea um i know that you work with a lot of administrators kind of leading through this process and kind of trying to support them so like what are some of the because we can talk about like what went wrong but i don't think that necessarily helps people move forward what are some of the best things that you saw like administrators do during this time to like support their staff to support the kids what are some of the things that you saw through this process we have been working with the district um all year long and it has been a bumpy road because this has been a very difficult year um and the and they're trying to make big changes and trying to do a lot of things at once um and anyway i think the best thing that the supervisor or the principals have done is put a pause on a bunch of stuff and say can we just hold on a second can we slow down bump it back to every other week, slow, smaller bits. Um, and that's been very helpful for the staff and I think helpful for us too. So mm -hmm. I think that would be my example. I, and I love that. Shauna, what do you got? I was thinking of another, another school that we were working with that um, had done a grant last year. And so, you know, spent a whole year really invested in having their, um, some key stakeholders within the district learning about mm. universal learning. And then what they did this year was they said, okay, now we want to scale this, but we want to be really intentional and I think uh, reasonable about it. So they set up like monthly times with us that they could have some of their curriculum designers come in and share what they're doing and share some, some sample lessons and just receive feedback. And we would say, Hey, you know, here's some things to think about with universal design, but it was, it was, um, very manageable as far as the time like it wasn't hey we're going to come in and, and give you all this information for a full day it's really more um conversational and it that happened after they had people really doing a lot of different things so last year they did some people did a book study some people came to sessions that were provided by our state and, you know some people worked with us and we did some sessions so um, it was very individualized based on what they mm -hmm. they could manage last year. And then this year they kind of scaled it a little bit and they didn't bite off more than they could chew. And so um, I haven't heard yet yet if they're planning right. on scaling further next year, but I thought that was really um, that was really big to say we realized that the last last year and especially this year have been incredibly difficult. Let's not do too much. Yeah. And th this is like when when you talk about the the scaling process, right? I think and we we kind of talked about this in, in you know the the cohorts that we were working in together um a lot of times the there's a person who's like the curriculum specialist and blah 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 right and they almost create it where there's a dependence upon that person having knowledge and sharing that out as opposed to that person spreading that knowledge uh really empowering people that will never necessarily have that role but then that's how it spreads, right? So then you're kind of, and then there's this, there's this notion and it's like the li biggest lie ever. Oh, like, you know, you should be really good that you work yourself out of a job. If you're that good that you've built such capacity, people will continue to find other jobs for you. They'll never <laughs> like, oh, you know what? You are like so successful at this, but too successful. Now you're going to lose your job. They'll move you somewhere else, right? <laughs> oh, and so yeah. like that, that building capacity is one thing. 